In this video, I'll be discussing the Kibi flamboyant gamine, the body type, the style profile, and at the end, I'll be sharing a sample wardrobe for this type. This video assumes, as always, that you've taken the Kibi body type test and you've determined your type to be flamboyant gamine. Having taken the test, a sample answer sheet for flamboyant gamine may look like this. A and B, as well as D and E answers, mixed together, but having more A and B, so more yang, more sharpness. Your position on the yin-yang scale is a combination of opposites with extra yang. So physically, you are yang in shape or angular, and yin in size, meaning small and petite. Both of these are important, but your yang is dominant. And now let's discuss the Kibi flamboyant gamine. Kibi has characterized this body type as sassy chic. And before we get into the specifics of a body type, it's worth noting that every flamboyant gamine woman will look slightly different. This is meant only to be a guide. What is consistent with everybody within this type is the mix of yang and yin with additional yang that makes them a flamboyant gamine. Often this type is typed as boyish in silhouette, straight and narrow with a small bust, waist and hips. But as we will see, this doesn't always play out for every person. And just keep in mind that variation is always a possibility. And now let's discuss the flamboyant gamine body type. Height, moderate to tall, five foot six inches and under. Body type, broadly angular, square shoulders, slightly wide bones, large hands and feet in proportion to height. If very petite, hands and feet tend to be short but wide and square. Slightly sharp or broad facial contours in the nose, jawline and cheekbones. Arms and legs may be long in proportion to height. If very petite, they appear to be slightly squarish. Facial contours tend to be broad in the nose, cheekbones and jawline. Bone structure, very defined musculature, unless they are overweight, lean and strong, straight lines, flat bust line and hips, unless overweight, and they have a tendency towards a leggy look or cultish as Kibi has described it. So I see this to a certain extent with these women here. All three of them have this petiteness to them, but Audrey Hepburn and Penelope Cruz have that leanness to them and they look just very small, very petite. And while also petite, Kelly Osborne to the left has more of that broadness to her. So a little bit of variation that we will continue to see. Facial features. Usually have extremely large eyes. Usually have a broad or long facial shape maybe very round or slightly oblong. Facial flesh tends to be taut and less overweight. Lips are frequently moderate to full. Coloring. Any type of coloring is possible, warm or cool, but flamboyant gamines tend to be distinctive, very fair, very fiery or very vivid. Hair. Any type of hair is possible, but texture tends to be extreme either very fine and straight or very thick, wavy or curly. So again, for both coloring and hair, any type of combination is possible. If overweight, body tends to become stocky and square. Excess weight usually collects from the waist down, rarely above. Arms and legs tend to become thick, as does the waist and hip area. Face may become very puffy and fleshy. So here we have the late legendary Tina Turner, and this is towards the beginnings of her career or earlier on in her career. And you can see that she is very defined in musculature. She is very lean, but it's not so sinewy. There's very clear muscle tone and definition. She looks incredibly fit. And of course, her legs have always been her standout feature, and she possesses that cultish, leggy look. They are very long in proportion to the rest of her body. Her waist isn't very defined. It's sort of like this 
smaller rectangular shape and that's the definition of her shape at its leanest. As she puts on a little bit of weight you can see that she becomes a little bit more squarish. She becomes fleshier all along her body. Her arms are still very defined but her legs become slightly more fleshy and her midsection also thickens up and she looks almost smaller if that makes sense because she's widening her silhouette without obviously gaining any length but that squarish figure that squarishness really comes into play you can see it with weight gain in this last image you can see that the thickening really happens around her midsection so it just continues to make that squarishness even more prominent and noticeable somebody who wears a body type in a similar way as Kelly Osborne, and her weight has fluctuated quite drastically over time but I do still think these are useful for showcasing what her body looked like and her bone structure looked like at different weight points. So here what I'm most drawn to, what I see most clearly is just how small she is. I can see that petiteness. She looks very tiny but again, very defined, especially in that first image in the silver dress, very great muscle tone, but I can just see how small she is. She has those very slight shoulders. Everything is just very petite. And again, her body would fit quite nicely into a slim rectangle. That's the easiest shape I could draw over it. So not too much differentiation between her shoulders or her waist and her hip line it's all just kind of in one one line to the right of that a little bit more weight so she just gets a little bit softer a little bit fleshier perhaps even a little thickening off the waist but she still has a very delicate outline to her and she still looks very petite just widened a little bit an interesting note about gamines also is that because they are a mix of opposites and they're mixed in such a way that is unpredictable their body type really can look a myriad of different ways. What is consistent is the smallness. And one of the ways that this can play out, this mixing, can perhaps create a broadness in the face, but a smallness in the shoulders. And I think Kelly Osborne shows this, especially in that first image. And when that happens, it can create this visual effect of almost feeling like somebody's head is big in proportion to the rest of their body. And I don't see it so much in the second image in that neon bikini, but in the first one with that silver dress, I get a little bit of that where her shoulders in proportion to her head and the rest of her body, they create that juxtaposition and make it seem almost doll-like, if that makes any sense. In these middle images, she's gained a little bit of weight, but there's a proportionality to her. So she has gained the weight in her face. It's puffier and rounder, but so is the rest of her. Her arms as well carry a little bit more flesh, as you can see, and her legs as well. But I still see that petiteness, the way she's folded her arms in that white dress. I can see that this is a very small person. Her arms, her limbs are very short and there's a squarishness to her, but also always that smallness. And in these last images, this is where I've seen her at her heaviest. I think she might have been pregnant in that last one. But again, with the rest of these images, I still see that this is a petite human. So that is always front and center. She widens and becomes softer a bit, but not overly lush just thicker and with a more of a widening of that squarish silhouette and then there is a different category of flamboyant gamines penelope cruz falls into this as well as audrey hepburn as the major style icon within this body type and they are very lean and petite and just very small and typically they don't gain weight too much they just are small and remain small so it's interesting to look at them too because they don't really have too much of that broadness if we look at penelope cruz over time here and 
the only images of her where she is bigger is literally when she was pregnant and you can still see that she is tiny so they these women just don't really fluctuate too much they don't gain weight and that petiteness is always pivotal and front and center and that lack of broadness too because the other women also remain petite but this flamboyant gamine is petite but also more lean they are narrower and they fit into more of that boyish characterization because of that smallness of the bust line the hips and the waist so starting from the left in that blue bathing suit you can see that she has the squarishness of the shoulders but just small and lean and to the right of that i like this image because in the bikini you can really see that she simultaneously has a defined waist i can see clearly where it is but it is not defined in a way where it is a focal point. There's a wideness to her waist and I wouldn't describe her as being curvy. So there is a waist mark and a waist point, clearly so, but she still overall carries a rectangular shaping to her. She isn't a overly curvy person and typically gamines are not curvy especially flamboyant gamines. In that black bikini, you can see that squarishness of her as well, but just also the leanness, the smallness, and just that general petite structure. To the right of that, she is gaining a little bit of weight and you really kind of only see it in the thickening of her waist. So same thing happening to her, that rectangular shape becomes more so because while that definition of the waist is there but it just becomes a little less visible and her midsection thickens up a bit and her bust has also gotten bigger so she might have been pregnant i don't know but still very much small the smallness is still always front and center and then in the last three images she is clearly pregnant so a bigger bust line and bigger overall but still so small that petiteness is the point i'm making these women just remain petite she has a belly a clear rounded belly towards the end she's probably towards the end of her pregnancy but she still just looks very much like a tiny woman so there's a a different manifestation of how these women can carry weight a flamboyant gamine will not be extremely tall, so they won't look like Jordan Dunn in this first image with her white swimsuit. They don't have that long elongation. They also won't have a delicate bone structure with small hands and feet in proportion to their height. So Selma Hayek in the middle has that petiteness as well, but a delicacy to her bone structure overall. They will not have an hourglass figure with the waspish waist and curvy hips and bust line. Even when overweight, the bone structure gives a more square shape for the flamboyant gamine as opposed to a curvy shape. So Salma Hayek is petite, but the first word we use to describe her always is curvy. That is the primary shaping of her body, and that isn't the case for a flamboyant gamine. They're petite, but as stated, they tend to be more squarish even when they gain weight. And finally, a flamboyant gamine will not be symmetrical in body type. A flamboyant gamine will not have extremely exotic facial characteristics except for extremely large eyes, and they will not be symmetrical in facial features. So I thought this was interesting because I think it's a good characterization, but always these things never fit squarely into a box. And I would argue that these women here could be defined as exotic in their facial characteristics. Liza Minnelli is a verified flamboyant gamine, as is Lucy Liu to the right. Tessa Thompson is unverified, but I do believe her to be a flamboyant gamine. Interestingly, the first thing I see when I look at Lucy Liu is a perfect facial symmetry, which goes against what Kibi has said is possible for the flamboyant gamine because of that mixing of opposites. And yet 
it happens on her. Liza Minnelli fits the characterization best, I suppose. She has those incredibly large eyes. But again, exotic is a word that differs based on who's using it. So I would just take it with a pinch of salt because looking solely at these women facially, I might have guessed that they are flamboyant gamines, but I might have not. I think the first two I probably would have, but Lucy Liu I probably would have said is some sort of classic because of that symmetry. So just something I find interesting. And here are some flamboyant gamine celebrities. Going from left to right is Lucy Liu, who is verified. Zoe Kravitz, who is not verified, but I believe her to be from Moen Gamin. Jennifer Love Hewitt and Penelope Cruz are not necessarily verified, but Kibby has said that that is what he believes them to be. So as close as we can get without a proper verification. Tina Turner, who is verified, and Audrey Hepburn, who is verified. And here is a list of Kibby verified celebrities. And now let's discuss the Kibi Flamboyant Gamin style profile. Shape. Asymmetrics and irregular shapes. Short and wide geometrics with sharp or soft edges, chunky, boxy shapes, sculpted shapes. Note that a mixture of opposite types of shapes works well for this type. It provides electricity in your appearance. Always work with a narrow base and add an opposite shape for contrast. So here we have Tessa Thompson in the first three images and Penelope Cruz to the right. And I think that all of these sort of looks are very much gamine and flattering to the type. We will discuss essence later and how that affects especially this type because the first three images that Tessa Thompson is wearing are very much more sculpted and electric or eccentric in that way that we think of Gamine as being and she does that incredibly well because I believe her to be a flamboyant Gamine but I also believe her to have a flamboyant Gamine essence so what she can carry is a lot of visual interest and wacky styling looks incredibly good on her because it matches that essence. Penelope Cruz, I believe to be a flamboyant gamine, but I think she carries a classic essence. So I couldn't imagine her in any of the looks that Tessa Thompson is wearing. They would look very crazy on her. They would overwhelm her and just wouldn't harmonize well with her. And yet they're both in the same body type. So this is very interesting and we'll discuss it more as we move along. But the key takeaway here is that the shaping of these clothes is very sculptural. There's a sharpness to the edges. And in Penelope's case, we have that boxiness, those sharp lines, but small boxes. So it's one piece, but the, the shaping of that jacket and just I could draw it with a ruler. So very sharp, very lean, very narrow and boxy, small, that works well for her. And in Tess's case, we have all of that sculptural detail, sharp edges, but also the hardening of the fabrics, just wild shapes that are very interesting and juxtaposed to each other and very visually interesting and fun. And that works for her type of flamboyant gamine. Avoid delicate, intricate shapes. So these very light and delicate, very soft shapes in the skirts and the, the shoulder of this first dress, much too delicate, much too ornate, very soft, and it just doesn't mesh well with Tessa. She needs something a lot more structured and rigid. The delicacy of all of this is really not aligning with her. Avoid symmetrical, even shapes. So the flamboyant part of the flamboyant gamine is a nod to that additional yang, which is additional angularity and sharpness. When the shapes are too symmetric and rounded and soft, it works against that. And there's really nothing to focus on. So symmetry looks very boring on them. It's just sort of there. So avoid that. 
and avoid ornate shapes unless they are very irregular and witty. So here we have Tina Turner in this very delicate and ornate style dress, but the ornateness of those flowers right in the bodice area really just doesn't work with her. It feels very too girly for her. She is a person who embodies also that flamboyant gamine essence. So requiring that sharpness, that electricity is very big for that kind of embodiment. And this dress lacks all of that. It's just very sweet. It's too ingenue and it doesn't really capture her essence well. So it doesn't work typically for this type. But I did want to touch on how ornate shapes can work for this type if, as Kibi mentioned, they are irregular and witty. So I would argue all of these looks that Tessa Thompson is wearing are fairly ornate. There's a delicacy to them. All of those ruffles in that first image and just the sashes and the fabric in that green dress. The third one is all whimsical and very soft. The big loop skirt of that black dress has a rounded delicacy to it and the ruffles in that last dress. So there is a, a softness in all of them, a through line of softness and ornateness, but they are irregular and witty as Kibby would put it. For me, that sort of just means they're a little bit wacky and out of the ordinary, not expected. And that again ties directly to that fun and flamboyant nature of the flamboyant gamine essence, which again, I think Tessa Thompson has. So for her, these are right up her alley. They are not too much. They are not too crazy. They just blend well with her and she shines and looks fun and interesting and completely in her element while wearing them. Line and silhouette. Broken staccato silhouettes broken boxy outlines, sharply outlined edges, severely straight lines or soft straight lines. Draped or flowing lines may be used when they are very elongated on the body and worn with a separate that is opposite. So this breaks up the vertical. So meaning you can wear something very soft up top, but have something very narrow and harder, so to speak down below or vice versa, or something flurry and more lighter with something thicker at the bottom. So just that juxtaposition in the silhouette always works well with this type. And because they are so small, a breaking up of the vertical is a wonderful way to incorporate that staccato effect and meshes well with the juxtaposition of their bone structure, that sharpness and softness mixing but not evenly so. You want to recreate that in the silhouettes. So here we have Penelope Cruz and I see that boxy outline of her jacket and it works great for her. There's a sharpness in the lapels, just sharp straight small lines. She looks amazing and this is again leaning towards that formal type of style because that works with her what i believe is a classic essence to the right of her tessa thompson has that vertical but you can see that the flare of the pants and the hem of her jacket they flare out it creates this horizontal line in the garment which breaks what would otherwise be a long vertical and it's just very visually interesting the sharpness of that Collar is also just fun and wacky and she looks great. It's interesting. Likewise, Zoe Kravitz, she has that sculptural garment with the sharpness and it's narrow and it's short. Visually, I guess not crazy interesting, but the, the silhouette of the dress itself is interesting and she just looks very cool. And then to the right of that, she's embodying more of that boxy sort of outline, boxy jacket, the pants, all of it just fitting in my head into these long or short boxes and even the cut of the shoe, very stumpy, very boxy, but she looks great in it. And then she herself looks very sleek to juxtapose against the very 
almost combat style that she's wearing. And that is another way that the style pulls together and she looks very cool. Avoid all unbroken silhouettes. So here we have this top to bottom pink dress that has no shaping, it's very lightweight, a little bit drapey, and she is just kind of lost underneath it, and it's really not doing much for her. Avoid shapeless silhouettes. So because this type is so small, when they try to carry out shapeless garments, they really get lost underneath them, especially if it has additional fabric like Zoe's look that we just saw but even this one that Penelope Cruz has her body is lost beneath it and it's really not doing anything for her it's just sort of there. Avoid overly draped flowing lines so again I don't often look at Tessa Thompson and think oh she's tiny even though I do know that she is actually a small person she is petite but it's not front and center she has this rather big embodiment of sort but when she wears overly draped and flurry lines like this dress she looks smaller because they swallow her up and it just doesn't do anything for her this is too delicate too soft and too symmetrical and too boring and simple and not nearly interesting enough avoid intricate delicate and ornate lines so this is it's incredibly cute but it pinpoints just how tiny she is it makes her look small but not in a way that is flattering for her it, it shrinks her and she really looks like a doll she looks absolutely beautiful but it works against her very short vertical line it's a little bit too princessy and ingenue it's a clash of essence is also coming in as well as the vertical and the fabric choice and all of it but just this over delicate intricate and youthful design doesn't work for penelope in this case and typically wouldn't work for most kameens and lastly avoid symmetrical outlines so this type is a mix of opposites with more yang so an extra angularity symmetrical outlines are more for the classic type where everything is blended together this type is the complete opposite of that blending so when they do lean into styles that are just completely symmetrical it works against their angularity and in both these cases i think they look tessa thompson especially she looks incredibly boring i dislike the fabric choice the design it's too simple and too not interesting they look dull and zoe it's better off because it's more fitted and the fabric choice has a bit more sharpness and angles to it but this is not one of her best looks i like what the detailing of the gloves does for her but imagine that dress without the gloves and you really start to see just how simple lines and perfect symmetry takes away and detracts from this body type. Fabrics. Fabric should be lightweight to moderate with a slight crispness. The lighter the fabric weight, the more tailored or clingy it should be. All textures are excellent on this type, as are rough surface fabrics and all woven fabrics. Knits and stretch fabrics are especially good. Thick, heavy, or bulky knits are excellent when used in cropped separates, such as vests, sweaters, etc. Keep them short unless you combine them with something very clingy on the bottom. So again, re reiterating that juxtaposition of this type, this mixing of opposites. All fabrics are at play for this type, and it's going to come down to the particular person's essence blend, but typically... All fabrics are in play. The more fun, the more exciting, the better, the more eclectic, the better. And the more eclectic the use of it together, the more interesting it looks on this type. Just make sure that if something is big and heavy up top or rough, then it needs to be paired with something smoother and more clingy to create that juxtaposition that mirrors again that mixing of opposites for this type that will look most harmonious on them so here we have penelope cruz and she has this mixing of the 
I think that's a knit kind of top with a more formal tailored pant. And for her, again, this leans more formal and simple and tailored and classic because of her classic essence. But the lines are small and there's that through line of the black and the pants are cropped. So she's keeping within the silhouette of this type, which is important and mixing her fabrics in a way that doesn't feel crazy and that works great for her. Zoe Kravitz to the right of her has this more bulky and I think textured skirt with a slightly softer and I think perhaps still knit like top but softer and smoother and that mixing of fabrics is great and it's a cropped piece so the shortness of the lines is fun how she's mixed the colors and pattern all of it just really gamine looks beautiful on her and tessa thompson in the last two is showcasing a very lightweight fabric in that dress with the pattern and the yellow accents very lightweight but still great love the high neckline and just the detailing looks beautiful on her to the right of that that fabric is very textured very glittery but again, she can handle that. So there's just this wide spectrum of what is possible for this type with regards to fabric. And all of it really is in play. It's just about how you combine and put that together. Avoid overly delicate, flimsy, and ultra sheer fabrics. So this is a type that is yang heavy mixing of opposites, but they have that additional yang. So sharpness, angularity, and they require that reinforcement in the structure. And you can see what happens when they are completely devoid of that. All of these looks are very lacy, very soft, very delicate, too lightweight for them. And they just don't look harmonious. Neither of them are really suited by this sort of overly delicate and lightweight fabric. And I want to see them all in something heavier, more structured, and also just more visually interesting. This, this doesn't work. Avoid heavy, stiff and bulky fabrics that are not broken up by an opposite separate. This look with Tessa Thompson, the first one with the black and the gold shoes. It is in some ways very gamine. It is structured, it's got stiffness, it's got cropped boxy lines and there's a high neckline and it's got wild color. All of those things are true, but the fabric itself is all stiff. So there's a the stiffness of that leather, which matches the skirt. And what's underneath that colorful turtleneck is also very stiff and heavy. So there isn't that juxtaposition. One of these things had to be much softer to balance out the rest of it. So this just feels very cagey on her, very not flattering. I, I need one of these things to break that mold, so to speak. And likewise in the look to the right, the biggest offense of this look might be the complete lack of detail, but the fabric itself is just very stiff and that sameness from top to bottom is just too simple it's very classic leaning. So on Tessa, it's just incredibly boring and not flattering at all. So it has the, the structure and the weight, which is good in terms of fabric, but it lacks enough elements, opposing elements to make it work for her. Details. Details are the cornerstone of this type and typically the more the merrier. Angular sculpted detail that is ultra colorful and irregular and asymmetrical. That is the go-to call for this body type and especially if you also have this essence. Shoulders must be defined. You may also go for an extended sharp shoulder or a very streamlined rounded and sculpted shoulder. Necklines should be clean, geometric, asymmetric, and irregular. They may be high and sculpted or low and plunging. Bodice detail should be sharp edged and is best kept slightly oversized as opposed to small. Asymmetric detail is best. So looking at these women here, I am again going to make the case that essence becomes important for this type. Audrey Hepburn in that first look is a flamboyant gamine who I believe to have a classic essence. So for her, 
details are still important, but they need to fall within a refined and almost simple sort of setup where she can honor her classic essence. So have detail, but it can't be crazy and wacky because she will look inharmonious. Tina Turner and Tessa Thompson are also flamboyant gamines, I believe in the case of Tessa Thompson, but I also think that they have a flamboyant gamine essence. So what they can handle, and in fact, what they require to look their best is all of that additional crazy quote unquote detail. So the use of color, the use of angularity, the use of excessive detail to really bring their essence to the forefront and to help them to animate their looks. Tina Turner didn't necessarily always wear the craziest of outfits. That's not how she embodied her flamboyant gamine essence, but she did wear it in her hair. So that is a crazy hairstyle. It is big and it is wild and not a lot of people can wear that without looking crazy and or homeless and or like something is wrong with them but she did it quite effortlessly and in fact she became known for her hair try if you can to imagine that hairstyle on anybody else and have it work it simply doesn't so also just an interesting note about how these essences can be worn and how they play out. But detail for the flamboyant gamine is extremely important and is typically the cornerstone of their style, just to varying degrees. These are people who, when they don't have additional elements to their outfits, they feel incredibly boring. So more is more typically for the flamboyant gamine. Continuing with details, contrasting trim is excellent for this type. Collars, cuffs, piping, buttons, etc. As long as it's bold and not delicate. Lapels should be sharp and defined, wide and notched, or clean and sculpted. The waist should be slightly dropped or slightly bloused over. It may be eliminated in very clingy, skinny styles. Dropped waist trim is always stunning as long as it is asymmetric and not fussy and or flouncy. Pleats are really effective and should be kept low and stitched down. And the hemlines can be any length depending on the top. So the skirt is always opposite the top in style. So whatever you do up top, do the opposite at the bottom to, again, create that juxtaposition and just that alignment with your bone structure. Although a shorter hemline is most effective for this type because they do carry that petiteness. In these looks, I see a visual interest, so a lot of detailing in Tina Turner's look. It's very subdued for her, but there is all that trim in that skirt. There's pants underneath the skirt as well, which is just an interesting detail that works and looks great on her. There's patterning on that shirt. A very simple outfit, but it has all of these elements that worn by a different type might have looked a little bit wacky, but really look chic and quite elegant on her. In the middle, Audrey Hepburn Again, more of that refined, sharp, clean, classic-esque style to her, but a sharpness in the lapels, a sharpness in the shorts that she's wearing, just very clean, tailor-like stitching. And very important for this look is the black top that she's wearing underneath this. That creates that juxtaposition. So that tight, clingy black top right up against the white of the two-piece that she's wearing and the two-piece is very tailored and structured so she's doing all the gamine things but she's keeping it within a more refined palette and a cleaner sort of styling to honor her body type as well as her essence and then this image of Liza Minnelli I just love that top for a gamine I love the high neckline and of course the contrasting trim so that white against the black right up at her neck is amazing but also that white detail up and down her arms it creates that staccato feel that breaks up the vertical and just such a cool fun image 
the hat has that irregular shaping. I also love her shoes. They have that sort of boyish feel to them. Just overall, she looks great in that picture. Avoid symmetrical, plain detail, minimal detail. So here we have Tina Turner to the left and Tessa Thompson to the right. And in both cases, I just think the biggest offense is that there isn't enough going on with these looks. Tina Turner is much more flattered by her outfit because it does still honor a lot of the gamine requirements. The shortness of her pants is great. So there's a smallness of the scale and there's a general boxiness and a, a narrowness to the silhouette so that it mirrors the shape of her body, which is very small and boxy. So she looks good, but she could look so much better if she had a little bit more detailing going on with her look. And Tessa just looks incredibly boring. There is nowhere to look here. I don't know what to focus on. So there's no jewelry. There is no pattern. The color itself is very dull and very subdued. It's just not a good look for her and not in alignment with what typically makes her shine. Avoid overly intricate, ornate or fussy detail. So here we have those ruffles all along her shoulder and the rest of the arm there, as well as going down the neckline of this dress to tie at the waist very delicate very ornate very soft and just not really for her she really is suited by more sharpness more sculptural elements and this is too dainty so it, it doesn't harmonize with her avoid wide unconstructed detail here we have zoe kravitz who is absolutely swallowed out by this outfit it's too unconstructed and her shape is completely lost beneath it. And it also has additional elongation because of that coat. So it further just swallows her up. And this typically doesn't work with this type because of how petite they are. So this complete lack of shape just doesn't flatter her. And likewise, Tessa Thompson's dress and or top and skirt. I'm not really sure, but that fabric choice firstly is too lightweight, but then the roundedness of everything, the neckline and the access of the fabric creates all of this rounded pooling and there's no sharpness anywhere and then there's no shaping. So she's again, just lost beneath it all and it's one solid color. It does help, I suppose, that there's that cutout that sort of gives a break in that long vertical, but overall, there's so much of this fabric that it doesn't do enough to help balance this look out, and she's just lost underneath it. And similar thing here. This last black look is better than the one in the red because while the fabric up top is long and lightweight and really unconstructed underneath it she does have a bit of that shaping i think the pants are tied i see a belt that really gives her body great shaping and that does help but the overall look of it is too not interesting and it's all one solid color and there's a little bit of shimmer but it just doesn't really do enough for her to give her different design elements that would break it up and make it interesting and really bring it to life the weight of that fabric makes the look overall very delicate and soft which doesn't work for her i just wanted to highlight the importance of detail again for this type so Looking at Tessa Thompson, so here she's wearing a black dress in all of these images, but to the left, the detailing is very simple and plain and hardly there. And that's where she looks her least interesting. The first dress to the left, I think, is the worst offender. It leans very soft classic to me, and I think that's the style that suits her the least. There's just nothing to focus on. And as we move to the right, 
at least the fabric is slightly interesting and the neckline of that dress is interesting i like that cut out but again still very simple and symmetrical and just not giving me enough detail interestingly all of these dresses are symmetrical but they just change in how much detail they have and as she gains more detail the more interesting she looks so the ones to the right i think are more her that first dress has all that triangular detailing in the pattern and these things coming off her arms and there's that patchwork over her bust area of leather i think and the high neckline it, there's a lot going on it's still a simple black dress but not a simple black dress and because of that it's more interesting on her and she looks great the one to the right of that is also a very fun look i like the short hemline of the skirt but the sock and the shoe as well has that sharpness to it i love the glove detail and everything just really works it's rather soft and perhaps a bit boring but she's done her part to give it edge and give it visual interest and all of these additional elements are important for making that look come together there's some visual texture detail to the clutch she's carrying if you take that away and give her a simple black bag with a smooth leather outline that will detract from the look if you take away her gloves that will detract from the look and if you perhaps change her lipstick and take away the red and make it nude also that would detract from the look so the point i'm making is all of these additional pieces and all this little detailing is really important for creating that look and making it work and in that last image she's wearing again a symmetric black dress but all of that glitter detail that creates that breakup of that vertical line is so interesting and makes it fun and dynamic it adds that staccato effect but it also has a bit of flair in two places that really breaks up the vertical and gives her some horizontal width which is interesting and it takes something that would otherwise be a simple boring black dress gives a detail and then makes it fun and dynamic enough to work on her separates an obvious use of separates is very effective in keeping your freshness energy and vitality visible be sure to work with opposing shapes vibrant colors and electric patterns mixing textures prints colors and detail is a most exciting and elegant way to showcase your vibrancy so here i have zoe kravitz and tessa thompson who i believe are the perfect embodiment of this sort of electricity because of their having this dominant flamboyant gamine essence on top of being flamboyant gamines they really can play with this and wear the craziest wackiest most eccentric of looks and somehow just make it work and look great this is visible here all of these bright patterns different patterns with different textures and sharply contrasted colorways and excess of detail all these things are present in these outfits and they work avoid monochromatic and blended looks so the first two we have zoe kravitz and then tessa thompson and they're both wearing not monochromatic but very blended looks so in zoe's case she's just wearing three different shades of tan with a white top i struggle to know where to look and this lack of detail is very not flattering on her likewise with tessa the orange pants the, those leather pants and the orange top there's a little bit of color and pattern with splats of yellow but it's all too close together that it creates a very blended look and as a result she looks very boring and then the three looks to the right are all monochromatic and again these women really need that visual interest so this especially that tailored look that tessa has is just too classic in design and feel where she looks very boring in it zuri kravitz dress has an interesting texture so that is a design element that is adding some detail that 
makes the look work better on her but again she is suited by more detail than this more color than this and tessa in that last image all black everything it's too monochromatic too just not interesting enough so she really comes alive in that clashing of colors and textures and patterns that this just drags her down and now i quickly want to talk about the other end of that spectrum again so women like audrey hepburn as we see here she looks great in monochromatic and blended looks because again that classic essence is front and center so the classic essence really calls for blendedness and a ensemble effect so top and bottom coming together in a way that is very thoughtful or even matchy matchy so when she does this she doesn't look boring at all she simply looks elegant head to toe black in this dress and in the pants and turtleneck to the right as well as this two-piece that is a matching set in the middle she looks great and somebody who embodies this in a modern sense i think is penelope cruz as i've mentioned and again she looks great in this ensemble effect this monochromatic or very simple and classic sort of color combination style that works for her better than anything that I would recommend for Tessa Thompson and or Zoe Kravitz, for example. In fact, when we put Penelope Cruz in what I consider to be more flamboyant, gamine leaning styles, like here, this has the, the scale of the flamboyant gamine and that sort of fun, playful edginess to it, both of these looks these are very separate from her because she just doesn't have that essence there's something about this that looks try hard and not effortless it's like she's trying to be cool and so there's a lack of harmony between her and this style of gamine clothing because she doesn't have that essence but the minute that you lean more into a classic sort of styling while still upholding the gamine she really comes alive and she looks so much more harmonious so here this is classic in terms of the colorway and the styling and the patterns but it's gamine in the proportions so everything is still small and cropped and the necklines are high but the fabrics are high quality and the patterns are very traditional and classic and the the clothes themselves are very simple so there's an elegance to it that ties into that classic essence and this is where she looks her most harmonious and then you have somebody like zoe kravitz who is very interesting because i think she has more leeway in the spectrum of gamine that she can be as compared to somebody like Penelope Cruz, which is much tighter and not as varied, not as experimental. Color. Your use of color should be electric, bold, dynamic, and vibrant. Wild color combinations that no one else would dream of using are ultra fresh and sophisticated on this type. Multicolored splashes against a very light or very dark background are equally exciting. Always animate your look by breaking up your silhouette with lots of colorful accents. Sharp color contrast is excellent. Just be highly original with your color choices and combinations. So this is again a case where more is more for the flamboyant gamine. The use of color for this type should be exciting, electric and energizing because it really connects to that essence. Looking at these women here, Tessa Thompson has that dress with a lot of colors on it. Multicolored splashes are not necessarily the best for this type. If they blend into each other, you almost want to keep a rigidity to those colors and have them be geometric. So there's a sharpness to it. But I've always loved this dress on her. I think 
it combines well it's very interesting visually obviously but that top part is so fitted and the lines are quite sharp so even though the color does that blending it matches well the top to the bottom there's a marriage there that really works beautifully on her penelope cruz has more of that broken up horizontal line in the top the black and the white and that bright bold red together just very dynamic and it looks great on her and this picture of twiggy is sort of the classic characterization of the gamine not only in the dress type but of course in that very fun youthful bold and electric use of color staccato it's just very energetic and it looks great on her notice how it doesn't overpower her and any of these women but specifically that twiggy outfit would very quickly be too much on most people and on her it looks very normal it's not needing to be subdued in any way it just looks good i couldn't wear that outfit for a lot of different reasons but those colors are just too busy and too active too energetic that they would overwhelm me but they work on this type avoid one long line of any color and monochromatic color schemes so here you have both penelope cruz and zoe kravitz in these plain white dresses and in each case i really want to see more detail more color more anything that can make these outfits more visually interesting particularly in zoe's case i think because the fabric of her dress is also so plain and so clean it just looks incredibly dull on her this is a type again very suited by detail color mixing and matching of patterns and even in penelope's case where we can make the argument for more subdued sort of styling because of her what i perceive as a classic essence even in that case she still requires detail and these looks are just too lacking in that area that they are not interesting enough and they look incredibly dull on both these women and here again that monochromatic color scheme that zuri has as we saw before it's just very dull very draining on her so to be avoided avoid overly blended pastels unless they are very well accented or crisply defined in patterns so this look is interesting i think in there's a version of it where the skirt is different that could work i do like how the top is very sharply cut in that v and i like the black on her i like the faux high neckline by the diamonds i like the top part of this dress very much but specifically the skirt of it i hate how it flares out on her that sort of a-line silhouette is really not great for this type but also the color of it is very soft and blended and pastel-y so while i enjoy that it's different from the black that does create that it cuts the vertical which is important but it's not the best way to do it the skirt itself just really takes away from her it makes it very soft very girly in an ingenue sense and lacking in that additional yang so this sort of undefined blended coloring isn't the greatest for this type colors are best when they are in clear patterns with sharp lines and i know where this one belongs etc avoid neutrals unless they are heavily accented so that first look with the dress navy dress i think black shoes black mask and her coat on her arm is either black or navy but there's just not enough variation between the colors that she's wearing and then the one thing that is different the bag is also this really dull neutral taupey color so there's just not enough life to animate this look and she looks incredibly dull the look to the right of it is much better than the 
one I just discussed, but again, it's very subdued on her. There is a sort of elevation that happens because it does some things quite right. I love the crop of the pants and the color combination of everything together does work well. And she has little accents in the black of her bag with the black of her sunglasses. Her hair gives a bit of highlighting. It's an interesting look. It's not terrible. And it leans towards that spectrum we discussed where Zoe can go cleaner to more hectic or chaotic. This is much more in that cleaner version and she can definitely pull it off. But in general, she is better suited to more interesting color combinations. And I think with just a touch more chaos, she really comes to life. Prince. Prince should be bold and animated. Asymmetric and irregular patterns and shapes are best, as is sharp color contrast for crisp definition of shape. Highly original and unique prints are good, as are avant-garde style prints. Mix opposing prints together using color as the key to continuity. Opt for a bit of the zany here, and size should be moderate to large. So here we see all these women in these bold, dynamic, beautiful prints, and I think they really come to life in these sort of looks. Looking at Zoe first, I see how she has used that color as the key to continuity. So there's the bright yellow of the sweater underneath, the softer yellow of the coat and the checkered pant. The base color is also so that mustardy, so another yellowy color and together it just looks so great. But then notice how she's also added those black accents. So the shoes and the sunglasses, again, creating that breakup in the colorway like we just looked at. And then she has an additional pop of color in that green bag and it's just fun and beautiful on her. For Penelope, in both looks, I see the asymmetry of these patterns. They're a lot more, especially in the white dress, simple and cleaner, again, because of the essence that she carries. But that dress on her with those three black lines is a lot more interesting and beautiful and harmonious than it would be if it was simply plain white. That pattern detail is really important there. And she's also done well to match that with the black of the shoes. So there is that continuity and I see a little bit of that black in the trim of her handbag. And it's also white to match the dress. So she's doing two things here. I think she's leaning into the classic with the matchy matchy, but also honoring gamine or touching on the gamine. And that's really where it's her perfect wheelhouse. To the left of that, this print is quite good for most gamine types, but it, it's very close to being overwhelming for her because of that more subdued nature of her essence, but she's pulling it off, but it's very close to being a bit much. So this is where, depending on your particular essence blend, you would have to be careful. For most gamines though, this would be great. It has that sharpness, the asymmetry, the heaviness of the fabric, and just very visually interesting in that gold and all those colors coming together to make an otherwise boring suit really come to life. I love this look on Zuri Kravitz. It's such a great play on the polka dot and a visual representation of what this type is able to carry out with patterns. This would very quickly become too animated, too playful, and just too much simply on most people. But because she is a gamine and she carries that essence, it looks fun, yes, but also still quite elegant on her. And it's a very tricky look to pull off. I think because she's wearing it, one might be tempted to think, oh, I could wear really small polka dots up top and then have these really gigantic polka dots at the bottom. But most of us would look silly in that and I just love how this looks on her. And then lastly, Tessa Thompson, she can get away with 
a lot more patterning than this look. She really can lean into the crazy element of the gamine body type and essence, but here there is a mixing of patterns that the one on her chest is very different to the one on her skirt as well as different to the pattern of her bag but there is that through line of that reddish color that ties it all together and then there's the black of the sheer i'm not sure if her jacket is navy or black but that darkness is talking to the darkness of her shoe and it just it comes together nicely so it's broken up well and everything just works and it actually feels very subdued on her also which again would be a look that i know i couldn't wear because that's too many patterns in one outfit for me so i find that very interesting avoid overly blended water color prints so tessa's look here is not necessarily watercolor but it does have that very fluid quality to it and it just isn't clear enough isn't defined enough in terms of color and geometry and it does a similar thing to what zoe's skirt that watercolor skirt and coloring is doing to not enough definition of the pattern and not ideal for this type avoid a small symmetrical prints here again these looks are very forgettable i think the one to the right the print the yellow and the black is a lot more dynamic because of the brightness of the yellow with that black but something a little bit bigger in size and also having a lot more clear geometry would be better suited for her and that black print to the left of it is just too tiny it really almost hurts your eyes to focus on it's not something i would recommend for this type avoid florals unless they are absolutely wild and contemporary florals are very soft and delicate typically so in that case they lean ingenue in essence and typically Anything on Jinyu will be the furthest from the gamine. The only profile they share is the petiteness. And otherwise, it really pulls away from these women because a lot of them don't have that sort of little girl energy for lack of a better characterization. If anything, they carry more of that little boy energy if they have the gamine essence to that extent. So anything that leans on Jinyu really is the furthest away from them and will always look fairly separate. It's interesting here because Penelope Cruz does not have the Gamine essence, so she doesn't have that little boy sort of dynamic, but she does have a classic essence and that's very mature in nature. So this first look, these florals are very cute and they look very youthful so again they look a little bit cartoonish on her and it's not ideal the last dress the quality of those florals is a bit more mature so i think it suits her better but again it's not necessarily her best look it's not terrible but it is better than the first one and actually in that lost look i get a little bit of a central quality to her so i think she's tapping into a bit of the romantic essence which makes sense to me that she would have because she has a certain allure and appeal to her so that checks out in my head but i just don't think that romantic is her primary essence but she definitely has it and then in this sort of styling i see her tap into that more so but typically most gamines it's a good rule of thumb to stay away from florals unless of course they are wild and eccentric and they lean on the wacky side of things and if you carry that sort of wild flamboyant gamine essence then that would work and now let's discuss kibby flamboyant gamine clothes before we begin 
It's important to note that David Kibbe has repeatedly said that clothing itself doesn't belong to a specific type, and rather that it's how you put a piece into an entire outfit that makes it either appropriate or inappropriate for that type. And for this sample wardrobe, I think it's also worth noting that I will be focusing on the quintessential flamboyant gamine. So this is a person embodying the body type, yes, but also probably the essence. And if this is your type and you carry a different essence, just tweak and modify accordingly. For lingerie, I chose these fun and dynamic colorways patterns. You see that in the first one with that red and black striped two-piece. That's a very lively color combination that would really capture the electricity of that type. And to the right is that very playful sort of cartoonish design on the lingerie, which leans into that youthful energy. And in the middle, it's really more of that boyish quality to this type. And it's very relaxed and laid back. And there's a gamine type I'm thinking of, Zuri Kravitz, who could actually wear this as an outfit with perhaps a pair of loafers and a blazer and a baseball cap, and it wouldn't look crazy. It would look very cool. For swimsuits, these have that, again, dynamic colorway. The pink and orange of that first swimsuit also has that very high neckline which is always great for this type and the general feel of a wetsuit kind of bathing suit is very sporty and athletic so again leaning into that boyish quality which works great i love that middle one too because of all that colorful trim so youthful fun energetic and the top of it is high neckline again it's really like a crop top just a beautiful bathing suit that would suit a gamine and that last one is more elegant and more polished and mature i guess but still having that broken up staccato-esque feeling a lot of trim a lot of detail so visually interesting and very beautiful for shorts we again have that high color high energy and in the blue and white that sharp color contrast and the shorts beneath that have that white trim to that geometric pattern the pattern itself could be a little bit bigger but depending on who's wearing it that could really work but i do enjoy that trim of it it really helps to pull it all together and then the two shorts though to the right have that very laid back and sporty quality to them and again contrasting trim there's stripes, there's color, there's a sportiness, which leans a little bit youthful and boyish. And that first one just has all that very vibrant colorway. So just a lot of great options. For casual tops, there is that playful quality to these tops. So I like that they are cropped. So again, there's a petiteness to this type. So respecting that vertical line a lot of the time looks like cropped pieces and there's also an animated fun quality so the two bottom ones have that graphic design to it which is a fun way of doing that and the top two have a bit more of an elevated feel to them while still honoring the gamine specifics so the polo shirt to the right has that contrasting trim which adds interesting detail and it also has the high neckline so it's a polished elevated look but still very gamine and the one to the left of it has all that beautiful color play and it's just very fun and visually interesting without being too much blouses should be narrow sculpted and clean with simple necklines and geometric trim Fabric should be of a moderate weight and slightly crisp or flat and should either be matte, finished or ultra shiny. Any asymmetrical detail is excellent. So here again, notice the cropped pieces. 
Notice the high neckline. Notice the bold color of that red piece and the dynamic pattern, fun pattern of that blue vest to the top. I also really enjoy this white shirt because it's long sleeves but it still has that cropped feel to it and that sharpness of the hemline gives it that it's symmetrical but it has it feels edgier because of that and it's just a fun design element that is really cool for this type the last option to the right has that high neckline that contrasting trim so a great option for any formal function and really can just elevate a look but still feel fresh and youthful and compatible with a gamine you want to avoid frilly blouses ultra clingy blouses and symmetrically traditional styles sweaters should have a sculpted shape in skinny rib knits or be heavy and bulky worn in shorter crop styles that are body hugging patterns should be bold and geometric with irregular shapes animated patterns are excellent so here it's important to remember that juxtaposition that is so important for this type so you can either go ultra tight and clingy like that first turtleneck so that high neckline and that really great shaping and that goes well with a bottom that is more loose so that there is that play and contrast in how the fabrics behave on the body but you can also go more looser and bulky and these options are great i love here again the high necklines in that first one there's that white trim and that very dynamic pattern the purple the orange the yellow very irregular and very interesting that would be great for a gamine outfit the one to the top right is a lot more traditional and symmetric but that color has a bit of that detailing that just makes it interesting and it gives it albeit rounded but a sense of geometry and sculpting that i think is very cool and depending on what you're wearing at the bottom that could look really great on a gamine as well and i love that vest to the bottom right with all those colors and that brightness of the orange that is the trim all along just very beautiful very fun and that can be played up or down depending on what the rest of the outfit is doing but just very cool avoid traditional symmetrical styles pants should be boldly man tailored in heavy fabric with deep pleats and cuffs they should be short and showing the ankle pants may also be cropped as short as you want skin tight pants like spandex or ribbed pants are also excellent on you so again remembering that that juxtaposition in how the clothes behave on the gamine is such a key styling element the very skinny pants or spandex type pants the body tight type materials will be great because they will give that narrowness like the pants to the right and then paired with something looser up top that is just a great outfit so a great staple for this type and then to the left of that is all these incredibly well tailored pants that are just cropped so they respect the vertical but they are also leaning into that boyish sort of styling that is so great for this type i like how a lot of them are styled already with a pair of loafers which again boyish so beautiful on this type and the pattern of those pants second from the right is just very beautiful adding visual interest adding uh, an, another element so that there's more to look at because details are so important for this type and that first pair of pants i love how those colors play together the black and the maroon and the white just really really beautiful i think that would look amazing on this type it could be cropped to have a better length for them depending on who's wearing it and but the the way that the colors work is just a great spin on a traditional pair of pants and it makes it so interesting and so fun you want to avoid wide unconstructed styles that are shapeless symmetrically tailored styles draped clingy slacks that are gathered at the waist and tapered gently at the ankle 
And then for genes, there really is a spectrum of what could work for the gamine. So here again, I think it's important to be aware of the person whose style you're talking about. So some of these are very clean. So if somebody leans more classic or professional, quote unquote, then these cleaner styles, like all the way to the right and right in the middle, those would be great. And what they do well is that high waist and straight cut of those pants to the right and also the cropped length. That's wonderful for this type. In the middle, there's a lower rise, which also is great for this type. And But again, there's that cropped length, which suits them really well. And then the other three pants have more of that fun play on a classic pair of jeans, which adds visual interest and detailing that would be wonderful on this type. The two-tone of the pants to the right and how the button is kind of switched and not in the right place. That's just interesting. It adds angularity and a sense of zany quirkiness that is great for this type. I like the patterning of the pants second from the right. That's just fun, interesting detail. And then that first pair to the right is a classic ripped pair of jeans, which is a way of leaning into that chaotic and boyish element which can work beautifully on some gamines but again something to be determined per person jackets should be short and boxy emphasizing a cropped and horizontal line shoulders should be extended either very sharp and crisp or streamlined sculpted curve the length should be from the bottom of the rib cage to the top of the hips Longer jacket may be possible, but that depends on how it's styled. The shape of the jacket should be sculpted, asymmetrical, and irregular. Contrasting trim is excellent, as is all angular details. So looking at the right first, I see a sharpness in those lapels, and that's great. And how that brown leather jacket is rolled up at the sleeves creates that very casual sort of feel to it which to me leans very boyish just very very cool and of course the cropped length is wonderful likewise that to the bottom a lot more formal but that crop length and that overlapping asymmetric detail is very cool and would look really cool on a gamine type with perhaps a different bottom in a contrasting pattern or something interesting but I really like that jacket. There's sharpness to it, there's angularity, and the proportions are right. To the left, the bottom one has that very interesting, fun texture, that green and black colorway, which is just more of that eclectic feel. I could see somebody really with a gamine body type and or essence pulling that off and just bringing visual interest to their outfit and really having fun with that sort of interesting jacket. I also love that detail to the right of it, that buckle. It disrupts the general symmetry of it and that is important too. And to the top, I like this coat. It is very symmetrical and one could argue it leans very soft classic or just classic in general. But I do very much enjoy that contrast of the neckline to the rest of the jacket. I love that colorway. It's cool to see that color picked up again in the pockets. And I love this sculptural feel of it. It maintains its shape. So this would look really great, I think, on a gamine, but it would become incredibly important how it was styled. It's also important to consider the height of the person. So typically a cropped jacket is ideal for this type, but a longer jacket can be possible just maybe as long as the top part of the hips. So if that's where it ends and the bottom is really striking and interesting, this could be something that could work for this type. But more than anything, I just love the sculptural aspect of it. It really maintains its shape and I love that high neckline. That's a neckline that gamines can always go for, especially if it has a contrasting trim like that purple to the blue, as we can see here. You want to avoid long jackets that hide the body. Standard tailored styles, 
like blazers, symmetrical jackets, oversized unconstructed jackets. For coats, I love this first one, that sharpness off the collar. This jacket has a general youthful quality to it. it. It just feels very fun to me. And that is what picks it up as being more gamine than classic, in my opinion. And I think that's created by that collar, the sharpness of that collar and the smallness of that collar. So the size is very important. And then the size of those buttons and how they pop against the white. So the black buttons against the white, that really sharp contrast. It feels very fun, very dynamic. And then there's that repetition of that black in the cuffs. It's sculpted as well, very streamlined. It's formal and yet fun at the same time. And that fun aspect is really important for this type. I just think it looks so youthful and fresh. So this would be great for somebody who is a gamine and has a classic essence because there's a classic feel to it but it's still really gamine leaning and just a beautiful coat. In the middle is a longer coat, which depending on who's wearing it might overpower the vertical of the person. But what I love about it is that play on colors. I love that yellow lapel of the neckline and then that bright blue at the cuffs. I just think that is so interesting and visually beautiful that it can really tie together any number of outfits and, and bring a fun element to what is typically a very traditional and boring piece of clothing. And lastly, that jacket has the shorter length, which is great for this type because these women are petite. So while this feels like just a regular jacket on for more Inca means it really is like a short coat and it has that bright orange color so that very dynamic color bringing electricity and fun and all that trim that contrasting trim so it's everywhere so that staccato again effect of using that in the trim of the entire jacket doubling up and the sleeves and of course where the lapels are and the collar i just think it's it's really cool and would really look great on a gamine skirts should be short and slim either severely tailored or sculpted into a clean taper at the hemline and the hemline should end no lower than the mid knee it can be higher for fun funky styles Pleats are okay as long as the pleats are stitched down through the hip area. Asymmetrical hems are always excellent even in evening wear. So for skirts, I would say what's important is to remember the narrowness of the silhouette. So for pleats, they are a possibility like that first skirt top left. It's possible, but it has to be stitched down through the hip so that it doesn't flare out and create a widening of your small silhouette. So all of these three options to the left are very interesting options for a shorter skirt. I like that bright orange with the white trim. Again, color contrast always so great for this type. That bottom option is symmetrical, but I really enjoy the visual interest of those flowers at the bottom and that sculpted shaping of that hemline. So just details that make it fun and more dynamic than usual really help to put this in the gamine category. And then of course, how it's styled could you really bring that out. To the right, I enjoy the skirt because of that uneven hemline. Of course, the main thing is that it's two skirts together, it appears, and there's that juxtaposition between that long, flowy skirt underneath and that short sharply constructed skirt on top the buttons add visual interest and that hemline again being not flush just creates that sense of asymmetry i love that look and then that flowy skirt has that asymmetrical hemline as well which is just very interesting i like also how this is styled so 
because it has that flow at the bottom of the longer skirt, everything else has to be really tight to the body. And I think this person has done it well. This could be a, a really good and interesting outfit for a gamine. And this would work for somebody with a more subdued palette and colorway, but this could also be much more interesting if more sharply contrasted and fun colors could be added to this exact same outfit. Avoid traditional symmetrical styles, wide unconstructed styles, full flowing styles, deep gathers and soft folds, sharp pleats that are not stitched down through the hips, and bouffant skirts. Dresses should be sculpted, tailored, and short. Narrow styles that are cut close to the body, sharply extended or streamlined curves at the shoulders, asymmetric detail and contrasting trim are both excellent touches. Waist should usually be lowered, but a white stiff belt in a contrasting color could also be used. Hemlines are short if the skirt is straight, longer if the skirt is uneven. Fabric should be of moderate to light weight to always reveal your shape. Rib knit dresses that sculpt to the contours of the body are excellent. Asymmetrical hemlines and dropped waist detail are very chic. So these four looks I think really capture the key elements of what make dresses work for the gamine. Firstly, just shaping of the body, things that lie close to the body to make sure that the petite body of this type isn't lost behind an excess of fabric is wonderful. So here all of these dresses do that beautifully. And then there's the additional detail of each of them. The first one has that high neckline which is great for this type and I also really love the colorway. So that sharply contrasted red on purple is fun, it's interesting, it's that staccato that breaks up the long vertical and just a beautiful outfit. I also love how it's paired with those Oxford type shoes, just a great look for a gamine. To the right of that we have again the high neckline and here we also have that asymmetric hemline which is great for this type, it's adding an additional layer of angularity and there's also that contrasting trim so that white on that maroon just very interesting visually and this is a great dress again for gamines. I also like the hair of this person. It's very short and the kind of hairstyle, I can't see all of it, but also feels very gamine to me. To the right of that, we have, again, contrasting trim in that orange dress. Just a fun stitching detail that makes it youthful and that orange color is very bold and again, feels very energized. To the right of that, that very sharp, detailing at the neck of the collar is a small touch but one that really elevates this look. I could also picture a necktie detail there, something like a pendant of sorts that would just add again an additional detail could work wonderfully for this type. Avoid frilly flouncy dresses, avoid full flowing dresses, traditional symmetrical dresses, and wide unconstructed dresses. For evening wear, narrow shapes with geometric edges, smooth fabrics, hard edged metallics, beading, crisp tailored and colorful trim, asymmetrical hemlines, playful accessories, slinky gowns with broad shoulders, sleek sheets that are very bare, drop waist dresses with shoulder emphasis, flapper style cocktail dresses, short jacketed pants outfits, cropped beaded jackets, wide leg satin pajamas, etc. And evening separates with glitzy trim. Here I have Tessa Thompson in three looks and I think these capture some of these elements beautifully. More than anything, I think the key to great gamine style is to remember to keep it interesting. So colors, textures, fabric choices, silhouettes, mix and match and just really bring a look to life. There's so much fun that this type can do and these are the people that can get away with so much. So if you can do it, it's almost a crime, I feel, to not experiment with fashion.
Let's discuss KB Flamboy and Gamian accessories. Yours should be cleanly sculpted and in angular shapes that veer to the asymmetric and or irregular. Bags should be angular and asymmetric in shape. Think triangles, squares, skinny rectangles, etc. They should be crisp leather, stiff and flat. Wild patterns, bright colors and unusual fabrics are very chic. These are all options that could be great for a gamine type depending on what their personal style is and what their essence blend is but i see bright colors and geometric outlines sharp color contrast and a sort of playfulness to all the styles that backpack to the top right has that youthful boyish element to it too and these people really can pull that off and it doesn't look childish it looks very chic and very sophisticated so these are all just great options depending on what look you're going for and that little backpack with the mouth detail is just interesting and a nod to your ability to really play with pattern and fun animation and really use that as a part of your regular style without it feeling too much or overwhelming or childish in any way. Avoid small rounded bags with delicate straps or ornate trim. Avoid oversized unconstructed bags. Avoid moderate symmetrical pocketbooks with a frame and handle or collapsible briefcases. Shoes should be angular and irregular in shape, slightly chunky in style low triangular heels or very straight high heels, asymmetrical flats, brightly colored or patterned styles for fun. So here I see high energy, high color, high color contrast. I see very boyish elements in the Oxfords and the Dr. Martins to the right. Those sneakers bring that energy in the colorway and the shoes to the left are a way of incorporating a more formal style but still having that youth and vitality and energy to it. And then in the middle, I just love the detail of those cats. It's that fun and wild sort of pattern detail that this type can get away with and it just adds an additional styling element that will help to bring the looks to life because otherwise they get boring very quickly. Avoid plain pumps, avoid delicate strappy shoes, and avoid ornate trim. Jewelry is one of your most essential accessories. Shapes are chunky, asymmetrical, and irregular. Lots of sculpted metal is excellent, as are brightly enameled surfaces and colored glass. Wild costume jewelry is electric on you, but keep it very contemporary in feeling. Lots of vibrant color, sparkle, or the gleam of polished metal helps to pull your look together. So here we have a collage of interesting design elements that could really be great for a gamine type. And these run the spectrum from the very fun and youthful and vibrant, like the dice earrings that is difficult for many people to pull off without feeling silly or childish but somebody with this essence definitely could but there's also the more mature element of this because the gamine essence can manifest in a different way so here i really love the fun colorway of that bracelet top right i love the geometry of it it still feels very like tetris so fun and playful but also mature and the colors are very lively so there's just that going on it's a great piece on the opposite side of that i love the geometry of that dark blue against the lighter blue bangle it's a great way to add geometry and color to the outfit the neck pieces in the middle chokers are great for this type because they give the illusion of a high neckline which suits them really well and the one to the bottom is a lot more playful and youthful in nature whereas the one up top has more of that refined quality to it more mature the time pieces again the pattern bright and sharply contrasted very playful with the polka dots and the one to the bottom has more of a sharpness and geometry to it but that blue is a very bright color that adds that sense of 
energy and electricity that this type needs. So playful, fun, but angular and somewhat eclectic is what this jewelry is going for. And I think that captures the gamine essence quite well. Avoid overly delicate or intricate pieces. Avoid heavy ethnic pieces unless they are contemporary works of art and very sculpted in effect. Avoid small symmetrical pieces and dangly glittery pieces. Hats should be small and crisp in irregularly sculpted geometric or asymmetrical shapes. Crisp ethnic caps are excellent. So here we have a lot of very fun hats that would really look great on a gamin. There's the more formal berets and that black leather cap to the right. And then there's also the more youthful and boyish, like the baseball cap at the bottom, as well as the beanie. And then just the youthful and fun, more relaxed in the middle at the bottom, that crocheted style hat and the more structured one up top. But all of these, I love the trim also of the one in the middle on top because that blue against the pink, just a fun detail, slightly formal, but still fun. So a lot of options for hats for gamines. Avoid oversized, unconstructed and floppy styles. Avoid delicate, ornate styles. Belts should be wide and stiff or streamlined and sculpted. Bright colors, patterns, and unique fabrics are great for this type. Crisp, stiff leather and unusual buckles that are asymmetric are great. So here these belts embody that energy. Notice the bold pattern of the zebra stripes both at the bottom, the black and white and the red and black that sharp color contrast, very dynamic and very energetic, great for this type. Notice also up top, just the vibrancy of those colors, that blue and magenta type color. That magenta belt also has that sharp triangular buckle, which is interesting and sharply angular, which is great for this type. I also love that that belt top right is not only a belt, but it's a belt bag which is something that works great for this type. It's just very casual and kind of boyish. It has that feel to it, which matches really well with the essence of parts of the Gamine essence. So very interesting options for people with this body type and especially essence. Avoid delicate fussy belts. Avoid waist cinchers and avoid subdued narrow belts. And with that, we've reached the end of this part of the Femoin Gamine style breakdown. I would love to know if this is your type and if you agree with my assessment. There is a part two to this video where I'll be discussing the hair and makeup for this type and that'll be coming out shortly. If you liked the sample wardrobe that I created for this type and would like to have it in your inbox, I would love to email it to you. Keep in mind that it's more than just the wardrobe items. It is that, of course, so all the clothes and all the accessories. But it's also a summary and breakdown of the body type as well as the hair and makeup. I think it's a very useful and well put together document that if this is your type, it's nice to have all of that information in one place. So if you would like me to send that to you, click the link in the description box and you will have it shortly.